What's up guys? Welcome to Dev Life where we talk about everything development related. We try to keep it as uncut as possible and we're just speaking straight from the heart here. I'm Josh and today's topic is what are the job possibilities that you can get with computer science or uh, code bootcamp or software engineering, software development. What are your actual job possibilities that you can get if you go on Indeed right now or Stack Overflow right now? Let's start off with web development. Well, you have your obvious answer. You can be a front-end developer, which is where you're working on client-side. When I say client-side, I mean when you go to a website and what you see on the screen is normally considered front-end. You can be a back-end developer, and that is when you're doing something behind the scenes, when you're messing with the data in the database, when you're, when you're saying, hey, I need that person's name, address, email, whatever, and then I need to pull that to the front-end developer who can then put it on the screen so that you can see your profile information. For example, if you log into any website with a, with a profile section. You can also be the full-stack developer. That's where you do both. Also, the money is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit higher there. And there's also a lot of other jobs not related to web development specifically. If we jump into like Python, you have machine learning with the TensorFlow. Um, you have AI. Um, you also have automation. You can automate a lot of programs with Python. You can make little, um, you can automate the boring stuff with Python. There's actually a book called Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. It's a Udemy course. You should check it out. It's, you know, you can automate your Excel sheets. You can automate your browser to go to certain websites and do repetitive tasks. Um, Python, if you, Python's kind of annoying to learn, but once you get up there in the ranks, Python is a really well, number one, it pays a lot when you learn high-end Python, uh, mainly because of machine learning and AI, and that's, you know, automation is the future. So you're either going to be the one automating the robots or the robot is going to be taking your job. And that sucks to say, and that sucks for people that are in kind of blue-collar jobs or jobs that can be automated, but that's just, that's just how it is. Um, you can also work in, say, like a, um, well, Software engineering is so wide. You can do web development, you can do desktop applications, you can do automation, so with the Python stuff. Let's talk about desktop applications here for a second. So for desktop applications, you have C Sharp, um, C++, you can, you know, desktop applications are really hard because C++ is also really hard. And when you're dealing with C++, I mean, not only do you have to style the actual application, but you have to make it do all the same stuff that you have to do in web development, but on the desktop. So you need to go request data from places and put it on the desktop. You need to make sure that you're not grabbing the computer's memory and using all the memory, or there's a memory leak and it's just going to crash somebody's computer, something like that. So it's kind of like web development on steroids uh, a little bit. And so there's this little bit of a feud between web development and being a software engineer and then being a software engineer where you're making like desktop applications or financial analysis tools and stuff like that. Um, what else can you do with um, with just software development degrees? Oh, you can do you can do game development. I mean, game develop isn't game development isn't so you know monet and when it comes to monetary gain, game development is probably uh, lowest on the totem pole that, that you can do. Um, and just mainly because it's just so hard to get started. And if you're a single person doing it, you have to do animations, you have to do textures, you have to be able to model stuff that you want to put in your game, and then you have to be able to code it. And if you're making a multiplayer game, you have to learn networking as well, and then you have to do marketing for that game, and then you have to figure out where you're going to publish it. There's a lot to game development, and it's not actually just coding. I mean, maybe if you're working for someone in, in that aspect, but I'm, I'm speaking straight from like an indie developer point of view. You can also do mobile applications. Mobile applications are on the rise and they will be on the rise as, well, you know, right now we have phones and smart TVs and iPads and whatever, but eventually when stuff shrinks down to wearables, you'll be programming applications for your watch. I'm actually not wearing a watch, but you'll be programming applications for wearables and I think that's going to be that's going to be really cool. You can also do stuff with um, like Arduinos, Arduinos. I guess that's how you say that. Or you can do it with uh, Raspberry Pis, and you can do home automation stuff. I know that's kind of back to the automation, but that's like it's a form of like hardware engineering. So you can you can do actual like lighting setups or um, like a doorbell camera, like stuff like that. That's hardware, even though it's connected to the software that you learned. So these are just kind of some paths that you could do with software engineering and they're all, they, they generally all pay pretty good and the, 
the, the median salary is actually about $100,000. Um, if you just type in software development in Google, you get $100,000 as a median salary. And a lot of other science jobs like engineering, like mechanical engineering, like me, the median salary was 88,000. And so median isn't like starting. That's after you've been doing this for like 10 years. And I would say after five, six, seven years in software, you, you'll be over a hundred. Um, especially if you live in one of the, you know, if you live in a higher cost of living area, but I think software is not going away anytime soon. There are a lot of job opportunities. If you type it in Google software development, you'll see projected job growth to be about 17%, but that census was taken in 2004, uh, 2014. So we're about halfway there, you know, almost, almost halfway through that census. So if anything's correct, we probably have 9% growth to go, um, but we need to redo that census. Anyways, guys, this has been my thought on the different possibilities you can get with you know, a software engineering related degree or going to a Kobu camp or something like that. If you want to see more of these videos, hit that little subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications for it. Be sure to check out my channel where I go into depth uh, in these topics and there's a lot more editing involved and some special effects and actual tutorials and stuff like that. Be sure to check out Taylor's channel. He does tech reviews, product reviews, and he does kind of Taylor talk videos which are pretty similar to this and he's just talking about his life as a developer. So be sure to join the Discord. The link's in the description below. We'd really love to have you there. We got a great group of people always trying to grow, help each other out. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and we'll see you in the next video.